Georgia Tech head football coach Brett Key making his way onto the field here at historic Bobby Dodd Stadium on an absolutely perfect day on the flats for the annual white and gold spring game after a Gasparilla Bowl victory last December. There's a lot of optimism surrounding this team. It'll be the fans' first opportunity to see what this 2024 Yellow Jacket team looks like before their opener August 21st and 4th against Florida State in Ireland. Hi, everybody. A couple of Irishmen here in the booth. Cotter and Conley, right? <laughs> Looking forward to this spring game. And there is a lot of optimism because for the first time in five years, Georgia Tech's coming off a bowl game. Absolutely. And there's a lot of expectation for this offense and some expectation for a better defense. So it's going to be very interesting to see how they perform this afternoon. Well, let's start with that offense because that was really the strong suit of this Yellow Jacket team last year. It should be in 2024 because they bring back a lot of firepower. Just take a look. Well, you look at the production from all four of these players, over 6,000 yards, 54 touchdowns. Nobody knew about them last year. We knew a little bit about Haynes King because of his time at Texas A&M. Everybody knows who they are now, and there is an expectation for these guys to continue to blossom and get better. Yeah, everybody on that screen eats, plus a lot of new players and new faces we'll talk about today. Defensively, though, and you mentioned it, got to have improvement. Last year, they were 128th in the country in run defense. Kyle Eifert, one of those in that linebacker spot that's got to have a good year. Well, he had 81 tackles last year, and that front seven has to be better. It starts, to me, with that defensive line. They've got to do a better job of keeping those offensive linemen from climbing to the second level, and those linebackers have to be slippery and get down to those ball carriers coming downhill. The defense will wear gold all game long. The offense will wear white. We will have two teams. You have Reckham and Swarm. But, but to my knowledge, they aren't playing for anything. Like, you, you think about when you're in your playing days in the spring game, did you guys play like the winning team would get steak for dinner and the losing team had franks and beans or something like that? <laughs> there has to be something up for grabs, right? I, I think our bragging rights right now. That and, was enough. And, and you know what also is up for grabs are jobs. Well, that's, that's true too, for sure. Because in the spring, you can be great the past season, but the spring is an opportunity for you to prove that you can continue to have that job. But it's also an opportunity for someone else to prove that they should have your job. Aiden Burke kicks off, and it'll be a fair catch for every kickoff today on special teams as Christian Leary makes the catch. Gave you a little taste of the format. Here's a little bit more in terms of specifically what we'll do. We'll have 12 minute quarters, first and second quarter, right? Standard game clock, so it'll stop when you would normally expect it to. Then we'll have a running clock in the second half. I mentioned offense is going to wear white all game long. Defense will wear gold, even though they've split up into two different teams. So Haynes King takes the field in the quarterback green jersey for this first possession, and his weapons will be split in half. And don't be surprised for us, and we see this at every spring game, if players switch sides at some point in time. And one of the things I think co the coaching staff has looked for with Haynes King throughout this spring is protecting the football. They don't want to take away his playmaking ability and his improvisation, but they want to make sure that he keeps the ball on their side of the field as opposed to giving it to the defense. Yeah, he did have 16 interceptions last year, so you want to cut those down. Quickly, the swing pass out to his tailback, Jamal Haynes. And Haynes shows you his versatility. You know, he was one of those guys that you highlighted in the open that kind of came out of nowhere last year. And, you know, not necessarily a guy you would expect to carry the ball 20 to 25 times in a game, but he showed his, his toughness last year with you know, about 175 carries on the season. And I think what makes Haynes such a versatile player, he came in as a receiver and he converted to the running back position. So when he gets in the open field, he knows how to read what the defense is trying to do to get to him. Haynes looking for a place to run, gets it to the outside, and gets big yards, 45 into opposing team's territory. So Haynes with a couple of big plays from scrimmage to start this white and gold game. And a good job by the offensive lineman climbing up to those second level defenders, covering them up. That's what you want to see from your interior offensive lineman, your guards and your tackle, excuse me, your guards and your center. You want to see them climb up, cover those second level defenders, allow Haynes to get to that level in the open field to be a special player. 23 yards on the carry for Haynes. This time he's going to have to bounce it outside and switch his field, but he gets brought down for a loss on the play. Lost two yards on the play. 
And good job by Case Adams to come downhill and make that tackle. That's what you want to see from your defense. You want them flowing downhill. That's some of the things we're going to look for from this Georgia Tech defense this afternoon. Are they able to flow downhill? Are those defensive linemen doing a good job of occupying those offensive linemen? King to throw, steps up into the pocket, fires one too high for his intended receiver, Malik Rutherford. And I don't know if Rutherford expected that ball right then. It looked like he wanted to clear that defense before he got the ball to him. But you've got to always expect the football. You don't know what kind of pressure your quarterback will be facing. So you've got to be prepared for that football to come out sometimes prematurely. That was a seed, too, from King. Now we're going to get a flag. I think the defense may have jumped. That's Ayo Tafasi right there, one of the many transfers we'll talk about today. He transferred in from Florida State, your alma mater. And they expect big things from him, too, bolstering that interior defensive line. You know, Chris, I think that's going to be the key to this defense, how well that interior defensive line develops. So it's third down and about seven yards for Haynes King as he switches it up now. and. Jamal Haynes moves over to his left in the gun. Tech bringing some pressure. They bring five, but it's picked up over the middle. Nice one-handed catch and a big hit. Now, that's not something you see every day in the spring game. But Rutherford was able to make the beautiful catch and took the hit 16 yards for the first down. And a good job by the offensive line to pick up number 35, Jacob Cruz, coming in on the blitz that allowed Haynes King the extra time that he needed to find his receiver down the field. That is what you look for from your offensive line. Be able to read and know where to pick up those blitzing linebackers. Off the edge, King, nice job finding his receiver. That's Eric Singleton, freshman All-American last year. Makes the catch and they'll move the chains. Take a look at Rutherford's catch the play before. And this is what coaching staffs look for. You can have players make the easy catch, but Rutherford knows he's going to get hit. He's coming across the middle on that short crossing route, but he's able to squeeze the football, get it close to his body before the contact comes. So Rutherford and Singleton back-to-back -back catches as Georgia Tech in the red zone here on this first offensive possession. Haynes wrestled down after a gain of one, maybe two yards. Kate Adams on the tackle. Kate Adams, one of the four captains today. Coach Key made sure that these captains, the four captains today, were guys that were scout team guys that put in the extra work, and he wanted to reward them by naming them captains for today's game, as you see Georgia Tech's offense last year. You're the top in those categories. Eighth play of this drive to open up this white and gold game. Nice move by Haynes, and he'll score. I would say number 11 in white is carrying, uh, picking up right where he left off last year. And the difficulty with this play is you've got the jet sweep action coming, so the linebackers have their eyes on that action, and then you get the ball to the versatile Haynes, and he's one-on-one -on -one with the linebacker, and I think the Georgia Tech coaching staff will take that matchup any day of the week. There you see Coach Key with a pat on the helmet to Jamal Haynes. As Team Swarm takes the opening kickoff and marches down the field, mixing in passing and running and putting it in the end zone. Burr with the point after try. Eight plays, 75 yards, and six and a half minutes off the clock. Finished off with Jamal Haynes taking it to the house. First time in five seasons, Georgia Tech coming off a bowl game, and it was a successful sojourn down to Florida Gasparillo Bowl against UCF UCF took the early lead and it wasn't looking good for Georgia Tech but the Jackets came back Haynes King scoring on the ground and then he took to the air an impressive performance finding Rutherford here for the score as Georgia Tech came back got the win after dominating in the latter parts of this game and 30 to 17 was the final so Tech, you know, at one point in time last year, they were in a little bit of trouble, right? I mean, they, that game in Miami, they probably should have lost it. They would have been 2-5 and five at that point. A miracle, they got the win, and that was sort of the impetus they needed to get them through the second half of the year and get them to that bowl. Well, it was kind of a house of horrors for Florida teams playing against Georgia Tech in the state of Florida because they would 
give them the lead, and then find a way to come back and win in dramatic fashion. So you love that the team was able to develop that kind of continuity in tough situations, something coaches can't really coach up. They have to experience it and see them pull through it. So now Zach Pyra, and he's chased out of the pocket on the run. That's a nice throw. It hits his receiver, loses the ball out of bounds. But it'll stay with that side as Abdul Jinnah makes the catch. There's Pyron, redshirt sophomore from Pinson, Alabama. Got some playing times, too. Playing time, as you can see there, 2022 had to come in for a few games. So he's got some snaps under his belt. Well, it's interesting because Haynes King didn't come in and just get the job last year. He had to battle Pyron for this starting role. So he is very capable when he gets the opportunity. Third down and one. And they gave him a first down on that one. So it'll be first down. Pyron's going to run it. Eford gives chase, and they blow it dead. That's something you'll see in the spring game, too, is they're not going to have Eford bury Zach Pyron on the edge. You can see what they did on that play. They went four wise. They spread it out the defense, and they had the edge. I think number 52, Harrison Moore, the young offensive lineman, has to do a better job of hooking that defensive lineman on the outside, the defensive end. You've got to get to that outside shoulder, and that's something that he will learn as he continues to adjust to the college game. Yeah, Harrison Moore, one of a handful of true freshman offensive linemen that they brought in that we're going to see play significant roles today and probably in the fall. Pyron to throw. A pressure on the edge, but it's picked up. Had a tight end over the middle. Could be brought in. Check that. That's Bailey Stockton. He's actually getting some playing time. I just had a couple of the practices this spring, and it's not Bailey Stockton, who's redshirt freshman at a bowl guard, Georgia. Played with another one of the true freshmen that came in for Georgia Tech. Aaron Philo, who set all kinds of records in high school throwing the ball, so he was one of his receivers in high school. So, you know, they have a good good feel for each other. Now he's getting it with some of these other quarterbacks. And Pyron is chased out of the pocket. Thought he might be throwing it away, but he finds a receiver downfield. That's a heck of a catch by Jinnah. And you saw what Jinnah did. He came back to his quarterback. For young receivers, that's what you have to do when the quarterback is in scramble mode. Come back to your quarterback. Give him a target to throw to. Don't wait for the football. Remember, the defense is flowing where the quarterback is flowing, so you have to give him a target. So you want to give him a moving target towards him. A good job by Janae to help his quarterback on that yeah, play. Yeah, they need him. Huh? He's a 6'3". He's a big receiver. Pyron keeps it. And they'll blow this one dead as again. Eford, 44, was given chase and gold. But they need a guy like Janae. I mean, you think about it. Receivers like Malik Rutherford, Eric Singleton, these are guys who are under six feet tall. Granted, very efficient and very productive, but I feel like they need a big receiver at some point in time, whether it's in the red zone or downfield. That, that 6 3 guy that can go get the ball. Yeah, you want it in the corner of the end zone. You want that guy that can go high point the football. Another player to look for is Isaiah Canyon, the young kid coming in six foot four. He's got that unique size that you look for to be that third receiver. And it's open right now, Chris. Yeah. We don't know who the third receiver is going to be. We know Singleton and we know Rutherford are the two main targets for Haynes King, but who's going to be that third guy? Yeah, Canyon, the high-level recruit, was once a Notre Dame commit, not playing in the spring as he's still getting healthy from an injury he had before he got here, but he took part in a lot of drills here during spring practice, and coaches are really high on him and what he might be able to do come fall. See these receivers. Christian Leary, of course, had the big touchdown catch in that Miami game. Avery Boyd hurt today. He's another one of those big guys. You know, 6'3, 230, almost like a hybrid tight end receiver. He won't play today, but Boyd is a guy who's going to be in the mix in the summer. You give the Dickens in the middle. And he runs into a solid wall of gold jerseys. Maybe give him a yard. It'll bring up four down. Down by host. Talk about the third receiver, you know, the third and fourth guy. How about the third and fourth running back? You got Jamal Haynes and you got Trey Cooley. Those are the two that come back from last year, but they'll be looking for other backs to carry some of the weight. You've got a guy like Evan Dickens in the mix. You also got a true freshman, Anthony Carey. We'll see him at some point in time today, and everybody's really high on him. And what they love about Kerry is he's one of those guys that always seems to get six or seven yards when he carries the football. He's one of those fall forward backs. 
you know, if you stop him, he's still going to fall forward and get two to three yards. He's just first, one of those guys. Half, 37, or full timeout, full media timeout. And before the punt, we got a timeout on the field. We'll take it with him. First quarter here, the white and gold game on the flats. Former Heisman Trophy winner, quarterback's coach here for Georgia Tech, Chris Wenke on the sidelines. And you can see the numbers there for us. This offense vastly improved last year, led the ACC in rushing. And that had to make Georgia Tech fans smile that they could move the football on the ground at will when they needed to. Well, they discovered their potential in the second quarter of that Louisville game last season when they scored 28 points. And I think from that point on offensively, they knew what they had the capability to do. Speaking of capability, let's see what Aiden Burke can do on a 61-yard attempt. He's got enough leg, and he's got it. And look at his teammates mob him, okay. And look at Brent Key, he knows. I got a guy who can hit a 60-yard field goal. That's a great thing to know going into the season. Pretty impressive, and it didn't look like he put a whole lot of effort into it. It just looked like a very smooth kick, and it cleared. That could have been good for maybe 65, 66 yards. It cleared the crossbar very easily. Got a career long of 48 coming into this season, so. Well, you got to feel good, Chris, when you know you can cross the 50-yard line and anywhere on the other side of the 50, you can put your field goal kicker out there for a legitimate attempt. You can see how much it means to his teammates and the coaching staff. I love kickers. A kicker allowed me to win a national championship, <laughs> so you better, you better love those right. guys. <laughs> Florida State finally got their kicker, and it finally led to a national title, right? Exactly. Shout out to Scott Bentley, man. <laughs> There's Brent Key, second full season. And, you know, you talk about the difference in this team and last year's team from a confidence standpoint coming into the year knowing you can get it done because it's one thing to talk about it as he said but it's another thing to have proven it on the field and now the kids know they can do it well, one thing about coach key I, I love meeting him last year he's a high energy guy he's a true offensive lineman by heart the way that he carries himself and what his expectations are he wants a tough minded discipline ball club and when you play and excuse me when you coach under Nick Saban uh, you know George O'Leary that's the type of coach I expect him to be those were disciplinarians King finds a tight end that'll move the sticks Ryan Rylan Goaty is one of the tight ends which is transferred into this program from Mississippi State 11 yards and he, of course, was a great offensive lineman here, all ACC, ACC offensive lineman in the Joe Hamilton days. What I liked about when I asked Coach Key about last season, he said, look, what we did last year has nothing to do with what we're going to do this year. Last year, we set a standard. We want to continually raise that standard. So I like that he's continuing to challenge these guys. Yeah, we had a great season last year, but that's dead. That's over. This is a whole new season. Let's accept the challenge now. King on the run tried to hit Singleton, but he was well covered downfield. And that one was as much thrown away as anything. Cedric Franklin, the second true freshman in coverage. Saw Haynes King's arm on the run, being able to throw that ball about 30, 40 yards. And that's one of the things that makes Haynes King such a weapon for this offense because he can tuck it and run the football very effectively as seen by the 10 touchdowns he rushed for last season. And he's got the arm strength to get the ball down the field. Four for six throwing the ball so far today. Haynes has a big hole to run through. Picked up about six on first down. Tay Seymour coming up to make the tackle. Third down and four, there's Haynes. Mentioned how he exploded onto the scene last year. Now Trey Cooley will get a look. King to pass, he's flushed out of the pocket. Throws down, field ball tipped and intercepted. Case Adams on the pick returns at 21 yards. 
And you saw pressure. As you said, pressure. Forcing Haynes King out of the pocket. Ball tipped. Adams with the pick. White and Gold spring game continues in Atlanta. Brent Key overhauled his coaching staff in the offseason. The big hire was Tyler Santucci as his new D.C. coming over from Duke. And after that interception, perfect time to talk about what he did at Duke last year. And a big part of the reason why Coach Key wanted him was Duke was at the top or near the top at so many defensive categories in the ACC. And he said, if he can do that at Duke, I think he can do that here. Well, he brings pressure. He doesn't sit back. He allows his guys to be special on the football field. They get up the field. They pressure offenses. You saw last year, they gave that Florida State high-powered offense everything they could handle in the first half prior to their quarterback going down. And who's to say they don't possibly win that football game with the defense performance that we saw in that game and other games from that Duke ball club? Just saw the interception. Georgia Tech was actually decent at creating turnovers last year, but that was pretty much the only thing they were decent at on the defensive end. Well, when you give up almost 440 yards a football game, you're going to allow an offense to be very successful. So they've got to do a better job. And I think it once again starts with that defensive front, that front seven. They have to do a better job. It starts with the two big fellows down inside, Lockett and Biggers being ace gap stoppers, not allowing offensive linemen to climb up to those second level defenders. And Eifert and the other linebackers have to continue to develop. One of the things I like that the coaching staff said is we're not looking for the best athlete. We're looking for the best players. And that's what they want to see is guys that play well together and that can get up the field and stop the run. That will be key for this offense. Josh Robinson. Oh, excuse me, this defense. Yeah, Josh Robinson doing his part from the defensive end spot there in stopping Carey. Tech fans are getting a dose of this true freshman running back. Anthony Carey comes in six feet, 200 pounds out of Tampa, Florida. And one of the other things I think the, the defense is bought into is the coaching staff. They have to buy in two new staffs. Uh, when you see Biggers and you see Lockett both dropping 15 to 20 pounds, that allows them to be on the field longer and be more active. And you can have both on the field where you used to be interchangeable, have one on, one off. Now you've got both of those big guys in the middle of that defense. I don't know who's going to be able to run between a gaps when those guys are out there on the field. You saw Horace Lockett there. 15 pounds is like throwing a deck chair off the Titanic for Horace Lockett. <laughs> 340 pounds last year. Nice job defensively knocking the ball away. Warren Burrell. Now Warren Burrell is another one. Another one of these transfers. Came to Georgia Tech from Tennessee. He's a local guy from North Gwinnett. Now you're neck of the woods here in the Atlanta area, but they're very excited about what he's going to bring to the table. And Burrell does a good job of breaking on the football and playing the football and not playing through the receiver. A lot of times you see defensive backs kind of panic out there and run through the receiver played the football. He does a good job of doing that and getting his hand in there and knocking that ball down. Gavin Stewart now will attempt this field goal. This is 41 yards. Puts a leg into it and misses it wide right. No good by Gavin Stewart. And five seconds remaining in the first quarter. So with five seconds left in this first quarter, still seven to three, the swarm on top of Reckham. We think. <laughs> Forrest and I are still trying to figure out who's playing for who. I think we've already had a player switch. This is spring game. This happens every spring. Guys switch from one team to the other. I think we had, I think we had Haynes King switch before even the first snap of the game. Hey man, Georgia Tech's man. You know that much. That's it. You're right. That's all. Georgia Tech, Tech fans, the all they care about is we're winning. <laughs> We'll talk about it throughout the day too with their schedule coming up man they better get prepared they've had they play tough schedules because you think they play georgia every year in the sec they usually play another sec team but you look at their schedule coming up opening in uh, week zero the proverbial week zero in london on the 24th and it's just it's tough throughout And although they should beat Georgia State, that will be a tough game because it's an inner city rivalry. It's midtown versus downtown. So it'll be an interesting game when they play against one another. First quarter in the books. Brent Key and his Yellow Jackets continue with the white and gold game.
Yeah, some quarterbacks that run for first downs, some quarterbacks run for touchdowns. Haynes King, Haynes King does them both. You see on this play, watch Haynes and Haynes. I want you to watch the running back Haynes. He climbs up to the second level, does a good job of stalking that linebacker, and watch Haynes King read that and go off of that block, and you see the ability in the open field. The next play, the power read, King fakes the handoff. He reads the linebacker, and once the linebacker and the defensive ends commit, he keeps the football. He does a good job of keeping his eyes down the field. That's what makes him such an effective ball carrier from the quarterback position. The fake right there, Jet Sweep, you see the commitment, and he gets up the field, and once again, getting to the end zone. And now, the quarterback counter, the eye candy, watch the Jet Sweep action, allows for him to read those linebackers. They're going with that action because of how well Rutherford plays that position in that role. They go with it, and you see him read and get up the scene for the touchdown. Once again, great job by Haynes King, reading what the defense gives him, and taking that and making it work for him. That time, Haynes King finding his tailback out of the backfield. Trey Cooley, who slipped and fell. Eddie Kelly on the tackle. There you see what King, King was able to do last year. with 10 rushing touchdowns to go along with 27 through the air. Singleton on the receiving end on that strike. That'll be a first down. 14 yards on the pitch and catch. Cedric Franklin in coverage. This looked nice from this angle here. The offensive line is doing a good job of giving King the time that he needs to get the ball down the field for the guards. They have to do a good job with the center of keeping the depth of the pocket. You want to allow the quarterback to step up with those throws and for the tackles. You want to keep the width, so you have to keep that outside shoulder back. Don't give up a short corner to those defensive ends. King quickly to the outside. Ball carrier brought down after maybe a yard. Jackson Hamilton from the linebacker spot. Transfer from Louisville. 17, there he is. He's going to get every opportunity to play next fall. He and Light see the transfer from Georgia battling for spots. And Coach Santucci said he loves the battle at the linebacker position because it allows for those guys to be great because no one knows who's going to be that guy. They're continuing to compete. Rutherford makes the catch out in space. And yeah, about five yards. And I like what King did on that play. He knew he had Rutherford, but he looked down the field to see if he had anything in the middle of the field. Once he saw it, there was nothing there, then he went back to his safety valve, Rutherford, because he knows you get him the ball in space, he can make a play for you. Yeah, he was trying to hit Singleton on the post. Just didn't quite have him. At least in his own mind, he didn't. So he was able to get five out of it. Give him six. Third down and four. As a receiver wide open, that's Rutherford again. Cuts it back inside, brings it down about the 38-yard line. Tajay Butler, the true freshman, makes the tackle downfield, but that's 23 more yards. And going, and going, well, we'll go to this replay now, but I want to talk about their previous play, but a good job, again, by King recognizing what the defense is giving him and getting the ball to a playmaker in space. But going back to that previous play, one of the things the coaching staff talked about with Haynes King this spring was working on him protecting the football. And I think last year he would have maybe tried to force that pass that he looked at possibly throwing the play before as opposed to going to a safety back. Now he throws it away. They may have blown that one dead. That looked like a sack, a spring game sack to me. King was able to roll out and throw it away. Second down and 10. Again, it looked like he wanted to go downfield to the end zone. Thought better of it. It's a fine line, though, isn't it? Because what you're talking about, you don't want to lose. And Brent Key was searching for the words when we talked to him earlier. He said, I don't think gunslinger is quite the right word, but I want him to take those calculated risks. You know, I want him to be able to feel like that's a tight window, but I can get it there because I've gotten it there before. Now the option, quick pitch out. Nice move by his running back. Check that, that's Singleton out. No, Rutherford, rather. Malik Rutherford was able to take that. I think that's going to be a pass. That looked a little forward. You can see Haynes King last year and what he did in a single season. Just put up some massive numbers. You got to think he'll be preseason favored uh, for ACC Player of the Year. Uh, one of those guys that they talk about in the preseason. He's he in the conversation is. for sure. Absolutely. 
He's just got to clean up some of those interceptions, some of those turnovers, Bob. But I think it's also to... it's also the moxie, like the Miami game and those games. He got down against UCF in the bowl game. It was like he was never phased. You always felt like you had a chance, I think, if you're a Tech fan with him in the ball game. And I think people have to remember, too, he comes from Texas. I mean, Texas high school football is a whole different beast. So he knows how to play under pressure and under duress. And you saw that continued development. He's one of those guys that continued to get better every game last yeah. year. And you see by that graphic right there, Again, they never felt like they were out of it with him calling the shots. Goaty, another opportunity on the catch. Tight end is an area that they really need a lot of help with, and they got a couple of transfers in Goaty and in uh, this Jackson Hawes from Yale. We'll see him a little bit later on today, but both of these offenses directed by Haynes King on the opening drive of the game where they scored a touchdown, and on this one, really mixing in the run in the pass really well. And the one thing that continues to be a problem for this defense, and it'll be a problem from every, for every defense that faces a Haynes King, is when he steps up in the pocket like he's going to run the football. You have to react if you're a defense. And then he can do the stop, the jump throws. There's a lot that he can do because of his ability to run the football and influence defenses. Goaty has a blocker. Cooley has the runner. Picks up about four or five. Cooley carries the football. Jackson Hamilton in on the tackle. There's Trey Cooley, transferred in from Louisville before last year. Got a lot of play in time last year. Here you see Cooley with 274 and three touchdowns. That's the backs that come back. Haynes, the big 1,000-yard season, but also Haynes King, 10 rushing touchdowns. No Dante Smith this year. So the Yellow Jackets having to replace him. Very productive back in his years here on the flats. That ball is loose. Picked up by the defense. And then they'll blow it dead, but I think they're going to rule that as a turnover. Well, there was immediate pressure in the middle of that offensive line. The guards have to do a better job of sitting down, especially when you open up those hips to pull. The guards have to do a better job of allowing the other offensive linemen to get on their hip and not allow that immediate pressure. You see, right when the ball carrier got to the line of scrimmage, there were defensive linemen waiting on him because they were able to get past those offensive linemen. He has to squeeze the football. I think that's going to be down. I don't know. I, I think Cooley was the ball carrier. I think was he might have down. Then he might have gotten a hand punching that out before he before he went down. But I think they're going to they're going to rule him down anyways. We don't, we don't got time for instant replay today. <laughs> he got, but it, looked, it looked like his knee may have been got, down. We got to move on. Give him the benefit of the doubt. He's probably going to have stadiums. Plus, you know how. He, <laughs> yes, right. Just <laughs> even if it wasn't ruled to fumble, he's, oh, he's going to run, run some anyway. stadiums. Yeah, he's definitely going to have to run some stadiums for that. Just for making it close. All you have to do is say, remember the Miami game last year? Sometimes a fumble isn't a fumble, and it isn't a fumble, and it is a fumble. <laughs> Just hold on to the ball. This time King keeps it, gets it out to Rutherford, makes one man miss and gets into the end zone. Touchdown! Well, Kari G won't be very happy with himself that he let Rutherford escape his clutches, but he won't be the first one or the last one that Rutherford will do that to. And a good job getting the ball out to your playmaker in space, and you see his ability in the open field. He's very slippery. So you've got to hold on to Rutherford and try to get him down or at least hold him to pursuit gets there. But a good job by Rutherford breaking that tackle to get to the end zone. Looks like Kari G might have gotten thumb in the eye or something shaking up a little bit down there at the five yard line. Burr with the PAT splits the uprights. Team Swarm jumping out to a 14 to three lead. Rutherford getting the ball in space. Let him make something happen. Here he makes a touchdown happen. Second quarter action here in the white and gold game. Look at the schedule coming up in 2024 for the Jackets. Mentioned that opener on August 24th against Florida State in Ireland. A lot of hype around Syracuse, too. They got to go to the Dome and take on Syracuse. And look at the right side of that schedule. That is brutal every week. It is a gauntlet. They get a break between Virginia Tech and Miami, but it's a gauntlet of a schedule the second half of the season. 
New quarterback is Aaron Philo. And this is Chad Alexander, another young player that they have some pretty high hopes for. 27 in white. Kyle Leeford on the tackle. But Aaron Philo, specifically, record breaking quarterback, passed for almost 14,000 yards in high school at Prince Avenue Christian up in Bogart. There you can see his numbers. Broke the state record previously held by Trevor Lawrence. So 12 can sling it. 56 touchdowns his senior year. Here's People out. pray for that for a career. No, I mean, it's <laughs> nuts. It really is crazy with the prolific offense he was in there. And so there's always the hope that that translates to the next level. And obviously, Coach Key and his staff saw something they really liked in him other than just the numbers. He's an all-around guy, homecoming king, uh, throw a no-hitter in baseball. I mean, this guy can do it all. Lives a charmed life, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah. Things are going to get a lot more difficult for him on the gridiron now at the ACC level, but getting an opportunity here to show what he can do. Fires that one too high for his intended receiver, Zion Taylor. Another young player. Boy, they just roll off the tongue with so much. You think about it, they have a ton of early entries, right? Plus all these transfers that have come in. You're going to have, even just for this spring game, there's a good 25 players that weren't suiting up for this team last year that we're talking about today that are getting significant playing time. And then we'll have another 15 coming in in the summer true freshman class. Well, the great thing about all of these guys reporting early, they start to develop that continuity that you'll need to be successful on both sides of the football. Now whistle this one dead as Philo was a, about to be sacked. They lost 22 players in the transfer portal, right? So they bring in 10 plus 15 early enrollees here in spring ball. And here are just some of the names. And when I look at this list, I'll, I'll go up and down on both sides. They're all playing. And, and Coach Key even said, he's, I didn't bring them here to sit them down. They're all going to be playing for me. And not only playing, but there's an expectation for them to produce on the football field. So I, one of the things I, I like about Coach Key is, He's very straightforward, and he's going to tell you what his expectation is of you, and he's going to continue to ask you to satisfy that expectation. Yeah. I love the challenge that he presents to his players. Saw Jordan Vandenberg on that list. He's coming in from Penn State, yet to enroll, so we won't see him today, but we'll see him in the summer. And Coach Santucci called him a tank, so they're looking forward to getting him on campus. White and gold game continues. Yeah, NFL draft later on this month, of course, in Detroit. So Slim Shady with the background music, and it's going to be a big draft for quarterbacks. And it's always interesting to see whenever you have a draft where you have five or six guys that are elite quarterbacks, where they go, what team has a need, what team trades up to get that quarterback that they think is going to be their future. The most at, interesting one to me, I think, Chris, is, is Michael Penix. Uh, we know he has the arm talent. Uh, there's a concern about his injury history. So that, to me, is the most interesting of the quarterback. Position. Yeah, and you can see Mel Kuyper's top five and quarterback, 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 one receiver here, Marvin Harrison Jr. I think everybody pretty much feels like he's a number one as soon as he steps on the field, but quarterback heavy. You know, it's such a big decision when you're looking at quarterbacks because quarterbacks can either make you a great evaluator of talent or can put you in a position to be looking for a new job. <laughs> so you've got to make the right decision. Boy, and I think, do. too, the quarterback has to fit what you do. And it's almost impossible to make that right decision because you just it's you just don't know. Yeah. Evaluating talent from the college level to the NFL level is so difficult to do is you see more of Zach Pyron here throwing the ball, trying to get it to Christian Leary and Tajay Butler from that linebacker spot in coverage. A true freshman out of Louisiana. Butler's out of the New Orleans area. There's Christian Leary. Get a chance to see Daylon Gordon carry the ball a little bit. 21 in white. Another one of the captains that we talked about earlier. Scout team guy who puts in the work so getting rewarded today with the captaincy and carrying the ball here on the pitch and 
What's interesting on that play, Christian Leary got knocked back. I'm surprised that he's out there. Coach, the coaching staff talked to us about him having some hamstring issues. Mm. You see him walking off the field right now with a little bit of a limp to his gait. I just don't think he's healthy. I know he wants to be out here with his teammates, but he's more valuable to this team when the season begins than in spring practice and in the spring football game. So it'll There's be interesting to see if we see him again half. in this game. Media yeah, that's, timeout. that's a good point you make, the, and a good eye to see that is that's why we see so many players not playing today. If you've got any type of a nick or, or banged up at all, today might be the time to sit it out. That might be it for Christian Leary. Two-minute warning, if you will, here in the white and gold game. Defensive tackle Zeke Biggers is smaller in 2024, but he's not small. He's just lost some weight. You talked about it earlier between he and Lockett, the two interior defensive linemen have just shed a little bit of weight, gotten a little quicker. And you know, talk about your own personal experience about that's not easy when you're 6'6, 340 pounds to lose some weight and get that stamina so you can go the whole game. I know exactly what they, they're going through as I went through that when I played at Florida State University. And they had us on what was called a blue plate diet where you would get white rice with a pat of butter. You'd get boiled chicken or baked chicken. They even gave you the butter, though. Okay. <laughs> but, boiled chicken. <laughs> it was Man. a sacrifice that you made <laughs> to get on the field. You know, when I played, they didn't have roasted chicken and all the rotisserie and the things that we see now. It was either baked, boiled, or fried. <laughs> and fried. There was no way you were getting No way fried. you would get fried chicken. But, you know, you've got to look at the sacrifice that these young men are making because one of the things I think that makes Biggers and Great Lockett cool. unique they're both six foot six, so they've got long arms. And as a defensive tackle, what you're trying to do is get inside hands, just like the offensive lineman, because then you can dictate where the lineman can go. And you can hold on to them and keep them from those second level defenders. So their development will be key to this defense developing, especially with the youth that they have at the linebacker position. Yeah, no question. And it allows Micaiah Scott to be able to move around and do some things. You can do things with him. and. And Micaiah Scott is, is athletic enough to drop back into zone coverage. So that's what makes him such a difference maker when he's able to move around with those two big guys if they're able to be an anchor in the middle of that defense. Of course, you expect to see Sylvan Yonjun back from the knee injury he suffered last year, the beginning of last year. Ira now facing another third down. Goes downfield, has a receiver, just overshoots Chase Lane. First time we've seen seven in white today, Chase Lane. He coming back from an injury last year was really, he came back at the end of last year, was never really 100%, but he was great last year before he got hurt. So they expect big things from seven, too, and that rec deep receiving core is, you can see Micaiah Scott and Horace Lockett. Those three right there. You know, Coach Key talked glowingly about the potential to have the best three interior defensive linemen that he's had or he's seen here at Georgia Tech in years between those three guys. And then you've got depth with all of the transfers coming in. Here's Burr again with another bomb. This one from 59 yards. And he missed it left, although he did have the leg on it. So if nothing else, you know 33's got the leg to get it there. Minute and nine seconds left in this second quarter. A reminder, we'll have an eight-minute halftime, and then we'll have a running clock in the second half. Get an opportunity to see some of the players on the depth chart, as we already have a little bit here with Brent Key. Final practice of this spring session. So, you know, a lot of people, you just have to be rem reminded, it's not like a month's worth of practice every day. You only get, I think it's 15 practices, right? And this is one of those 15. you got to make these days count. When you talk about making it count, they had two different scrimmages, one 150 play and one 130 play, full pad scrimmage. And Coach Key talked about this spring being tough and developing that toughness that he wanted to see from this ball club. Here's Micaiah Scott. Did you have an option to wear number eight as a lineman? I mean, think about that. It's like, I mean... That's more of the defensive line guys yeah, trying to be cute. Those are the guys that tie, trying their, to be cute. They, they tie their shirts up. They want to show the muscles in their stomach. You know, offensive linemen, we don't have stomach muscles. Of course you know, not. We, we don't carry six packs. We carry kegs in our stomach. I love how an offensive lineman refers to a defensive lineman as trying to be cute. 
Yeah, we don't do all that. Philo on the run, showing his athleticism out of the pocket. E.J. Lightsey, transfer from Georgia, the linebacker, chasing him out of bounds. So we're getting a really good look here at Philo. He and Graham Knowles, the other true freshman quarterback, also prolific high school quarterback from South Lake Carroll, one of the top high school programs in the state of Texas. Those two true freshmen are certainly, I, I, you know, a big part of the future at that quarterback spot for this Georgia Tech Yellow Jacket team, and we're getting a good eye at Philo here. Dickens on the carry. Runs to a big hole. He'll pick up the first down. Lightsey again on the tackle. Keep an eye on two in gold. Philo to throw, has time over the middle. This is gonna be a big play by Taylor. All the way inside the five. Clayton Powell Lee finally tracked him down. That's 35 yards downfield. And Lightsey lost him on the short crossing route. He's got to do a better job of staying on top of that receiver. You see right here, you see him across the screen right there. Lightsey lost him. You've got to stay. And that's one of the toughest routes to cover from the linebacker and safety position because you've got these guys coming across. And you're usually in trail mode from the defensive position. But you've got to do a better job of reading that if you're Lightsey. One of the things that Coach Santucci talked to us about, you know, was he likes lighter linebackers. He doesn't like those big, bulky, 240, 250-pound guys. He wants these guys about 225 or lower because he wants them to be able to run and move around the football field. But when you're a smaller linebacker, you've got to be slippery. I played with one of the greatest, Derrick Brooks, and one of the things that made him so great was you could never block him because he was so slippery. He didn't want to take on blocks. You know, as a lineman, we want, to, we want you to try and take on the block. And I think that's what we saw a lot of last year from the linebacker position from Georgia Tech is those linebackers are trying to take on those blocks. So for Lightsey and the rest of the linebacking core, they have to continue to work on being slippery. You're the better athlete when a lineman is coming out to block you. So you've got to be slippery, but from the coverage standpoint, you've got to make sure you're bending at the knees, being able to turn those hips and run, especially on those crossing routes. You saw Lightsey there. You mentioned transferring from Georgia, from Fitzgerald, Georgia down in South Georgia, not Fitzgerald. If you're from Fitzgerald, it's Fitzgerald. So after the big game, they moved the team back. And as the receiver one-handed catch, the beautiful catch at that by Stockton. Gets dropped at the five. I told you about this little guy, 87 and white. He's getting a lot of playing time in practice. And he's just a spark for this offense. Well, a good job by Philo, trusting his lineman, staying in the pocket, not worrying about the pressure that he's seeing. And you see Stockton on the deep crossing route do a good job of finding the football, getting his hand on it, guiding it to his body, and then reading the block to get to the outside to get an additional 10 yards after catching that football. That's what you want to see from your guys. Not only making the play, but after they get the football, football knowing where to go. 31 yards, and it brings up first and goal. 14 seconds left in the half, so good situational offense here for Philo to try and get it into the end zone. Play fake, over the top, touchdown. And that's that big 6-3 frame we talked about earlier with Jenna. And you see where Philo put the ball where he could high point the football where the defense never had an opportunity to make a play on it. That's what you want to do. You want to lead your receiver, but also put it in a position where only he can make a play on it. Watch Jenna. There's no one else that can make a play on that football but Jenna. If he's not going to catch it, nobody else is. That's what you want to do as a quarterback. Give your guy a chance, but no one else. Stewart for the try, and it's good. So Reckham bounces back, and Aaron Philo, the freshman, guiding them downfield for the score. Abdul Jinnah with the catch. And with 17 seconds remaining in this first half, it's 14-10, Team Swarm on top.
contemplating in deep thought. We'll talk with that man right there at the end of the first half when these two teams come back out to finish the white and gold game. He won't be satisfied, I promise you that. Seen some things, I think, especially offensively that he has to be happy with in this first half. One of the things, though, defense, it's easier for a defense to kind of get together, come together, and be better as opposed to an offense. So you've got to hang your hat on that and know you're still developing a new system with these guys. Let's see what Pyron is going to do here with the clock ticking down. Quick one to Gody. They'll stop the clock, or will they? Yes, they will. Second time out. Goatee from Kennesaw Mountain High School, northwest suburb of Atlanta. Came to Tech from Mississippi State. Hadn't seen Jackson Hawes yet today, 85. Also another transfer. He was impressive uh, this last week at, at watching him at practice. I mean, he's physically impressive. Have you seen him? Right. Both of these guys are 6'5", 6 6'6". 6 6. Hawes can move, too. As you see Goaty's numbers there. You think Jackson Hall is coming from Yale, right? Obviously, he's a smart kid, but they saw him as more of a straight line, prototypical tight end. But since he got here, Buster Faulkner, the offensive coordinator, said he, he was surprised at his athleticism. So I can split him out. I can yes. put him in the slot and get a mismatch, and he can use that athleticism in space. I mean, think about it. You've got If you get a nickel, Trying to cover a six foot five, 255 pound tight end. <laughs> That's the Gronk factor right there, all over the place, right? That's why you can never cover him. That's why he was always Tom Brady's favorite receiver. Pyra now out of the pocket, gonna throw deep. Has a man down there and makes the catch, and that's gonna be out of bounds inside the five. Thought they might give him the scores. Chris Elko got lost behind the defense. Ball hit the pylon, but they're gonna mark him out of bounds inside the five. The clock has hit triple zeros, but watch Pyron here as he's chased out of the pocket and just lets it fly. But he keeps his eyes down the field. After That's what you asked for the quarterback to do. Touchdown. And I was wondering why the official called him out. I thought he reached yeah. over and got the ball over the pylon or watch against his... the pylon before he went out of bounds. Look at his legs going out of bounds. Yes, he did. You're right. Hit that pylon before that knee touched out of bounds. 46 yards for the score. Plus, it's the spring game, Mr. Fissel. Give him the touchdown. Give Elko the score, the redshirt freshman from Roswell. As a defensive coaching staff, though, that's not going to sit well with you right before the half, is it? Absolutely not. <laughs> it's a rule of thumb is do not allow anyone to get behind you from a defensive standpoint. That is the end of the first half. Burke hands the PAT. 21-10 is our score at the half. Swarm go into the half with the lead. And we're awaiting uh, Coach Key. We'll chat with him for a moment here at the half. Students out here enjoying this beautiful day in Atlanta. Absolutely gorgeous spring weather here for this white and gold game. As Coach Key is conversing with his coaching staff, we'll chat with him in a moment. There's Coach Key and his two coordinators. Here are touchdowns on the day. Opening drive of the game, Jamal Haynes. As Haynes King was able to mix the passing and the running very well. And then on this one, just this little outlet pass here to Malik Rutherford. Avoids the defender, he scores. So Haynes King directing a couple of touchdown drives, and this was impressive. The true freshman Aaron Philo came in, led him all the way down the field. And I love the way Philo, where he placed the football, he did a good job of allowing only Janae to make a play on that football. And here, you know, you talk about scrambling, Pyron, he never panicked. He kept his eyes down the field. And a good job by the receiver squeezing that football, Elko, and reaching over to hit the pylon. 
Brent Key joins us right now. Coach, uh, what would you make of that first half, especially, I think, offensively, you had King with a couple of drives and Philo with an impressive drive. Yeah, I mean, you know, get a chance to get a lot of guys playing today. That's what it's about. Uh, you know, really, we know a lot of the older guys can do at this point. So it's a chance to be able to get, you know, a lot of these younger guys in there that are new and, uh, you know, guys that are, you know, really good backups in there, get, get uh, experience and see what they can do really with, uh, in game situations. Coach, talk about your defense. They're adapting to a new scheme. How do you think they've played so far in this football game? Yeah, I think they've done some good things. You know, we had a three and out one time. You know, we've got a it, – it, it's different. I mean, the, the both offenses have – experience on the on both sides um, so I think the defense has done a nice job I think Jacob Cruz has shown up a couple times in the D-line I and mean, there's several in there that probably would have been sacks uh, if they didn't pull off on the quarterback there in the green jersey so uh, you know I think we got to tighten up some coverage in the back end but then again I mean some of the receivers made a couple of good plays one of the most excited I've seen you in a while was when Aiden Burr hit that 61 yard field goal it's got to make you feel pretty good you got a kicker like that with a leg that you can count on how about that <laughs> I mean, you know, we, we were deciding if we we're going to sky punt it or not, and he he comes out and says, "No, I want to kick the thing," and you know that probably would have been good for another four or five yards. So uh, that was great to see. Then we wanted the, the other one was a tougher shot; it was a little bit shorter, but it, you know a tougher angle uh, with the wind blowing. So you know, be able to get in these you know different conditions with you know wind and uh, get those guys some really live reps, man. It's it's good to see. All right, coach, we appreciate your time. We'll get you. We'll let you get right back to it. All right, thanks, guys. Go Jackets. All right, Coach Brent Key. At the half, pleased with what he's seen so far and getting some depth in action here in the second half still to come in the white and gold game. Beautiful day in Atlanta. 21-10, Team Swarm on top of the break. annual Georgia Tech white and gold spring game team swarm on top 21 10 at the half this team will open on August 24th in Ireland against Florida State and not only do you have two Irishmen in the booth today with Conley and Cotter but you've got one on the field and David Shanahan Georgia Tech's punter he explains the difference in snacks between the Irish snacks and American snacks three for the Yellow Jackets punter I am from Kerry, Ireland in the southwest and today we got a patty box and we're going to show some of my teammates some Irish snacks and some Irish cuisines. First up, potatoes. Smell test. Smell like ladies. Eight out of ten. Eight out of ten. Do you like a smooth eight? Oh, these ain't too bad. <laughs> I'll, eat, I'll eat the rest of these. Next up, we have Broderick's Mini Tiff Top in the Toffin. Tiff Top in the Toffin. Let the camera see. Not mm -hmm. bad. Not bad? You would eight. Like, hold on now, this aftertaste kinda hitting. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, my personal favorite, the snack. Kinda tastes like a, a Kit Kat. Oh yeah, I like this one. You like that one? This is nine out of 10. Lily O'Brien's Mega Milk Chocolate. This is high-end stuff, you know? Oh, rich. Yeah, this is stuff you save for Christmas. Yeah, I'd say. Eight and a half, nine, two. Eight and a half, nine. nine. Milk. Strong. This is dairy milk. Standard. Nothing in there. Just pure milk chocolate. I'm going to say so much Joe Hershey's. Oh, this one's good too. We're going to build this bread. I thought it was good. Chocolate. Yeah, good. good. This is dairy milk golden crisp. Like a crunch bar? Yeah, yeah, pretty similar. Love crunches, David. <laughs> this one is more crunchier than a crunch, though. About seven and a half. Seven and a half. Crunch wow. is good, you know? I wouldn't get it in Texas. Next up, dairy milk, fruit, and nut. Seven. A lot of seven things. It's smooth. Smooth. Seven out of ten. Smooth seven. This is dairy milk mint crisp. Tastes like some of those uh, you know, you get from restaurant, a little chocolate with okay. that. Oh, it got a strong mint smell too. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> uh uh. <laughs> Not a hit. Zero. The chocolate good though. The chocolate's good. Big thank you to the Aer Lingus College Football Classic for sending us over the box of goods. I know the lads really enjoyed it and got to taste some Irish cuisine and Irish culture. I'm really looking forward to the game in August. Hoping Ireland will get behind the Yellow Jackets. Can't wait. Go Jackets. Beautiful day here in Atlanta. Annual white and gold spring day 21-10. Georgia Tech with the team Swarm ahead of Georgia Tech with Team Reckham at the break. 
First drive of the game, Jamal Haynes picked up where he left off. Finding the hole, finding the end zone. Then you had Malik Rutherford, who's all over the field on this drive, finally culminating in about a 10-yard touchdown catch. The true freshman Aaron Philo came in and found Abdul Jannah with the score. And then finally, final play of that first half, you saw Zach Pyron scamper to his left and just chuck it to the pylon. And Chris Elka was on the receiving end, reached across the pylon for the score. And that's how we got to where we are today. Malik Rutherford receiving the kick from Gavin Stewart. And a reminder to everybody, we've got a running clock here in the second half. So a more traditional clock in the first. And as soon as they snap the ball here for this first play, that clock will start rolling. The Coach Faulkner and Coach Winky have to be happy with what they've seen, especially from the quarterback position production-wise in the first half of this football game. You saw Jamal Haynes carry that ball across the goal line in the first half. He joins us right now. And Jamal, looks like you picked up right where you left off. Offense is humming along pretty good. Yes, sir. Just trying to pick it up. Keep it going. Well, Jamal, talk about coming into this season. Last year, nobody really knew about you guys and the offensive talent that you bring to the table. Now there's an expectation out there. Talk about coming into this season and how you guys are preparing. Definitely. We just want to build off last season and definitely keep it up going. We've been working hard, trying to hone down in on the details, and definitely just want to get it together before we all start um, kickoff for college football. Does we see a trick play here? And it's going to be incomplete, almost picked off, covered up very well that time by Omar Daniels. Jamal, uh, tell me about the competition in the room. I mean, last year you guys had a deep room at the beginning of the year, good competition, but it seems like this year with the influction of a guy like Anthony Carey, there's got to be some good competition with you guys every practice. Absolutely. There's great competition in the room, and it's definitely a great depth builder. Um, Anthony Carey, just want to harm in on him. Great young guy, great character. He's been coming up, he's been working. He's working really hard and absolutely a great addition to that running back room. And Jamal, last question. Talk about the transition from wide receiver to running back. What did it take for you to become such a special player at the running back position? Honestly, the same mentality that I had at wide receiver. I mean, come in, get the, get the play, be ready to work, hone in down on the, um, on the playbook, and honestly, just be ready to work. You got to have, you gotta have that mindset of just being ready to work at any position you're at and Jeff definitely showing that versatility of what I can do on the offensive side. Hey, Jamal, last question for me. When you Coming into this year, what, what were you trying to work on? Was it something where you were trying to get stronger, bigger? What was it that you had personally that you wanted to get better at coming into this season? Uh, definitely with the change from going to Robert to running back, I definitely needed to put on pounds, and I absolutely wanted to get faster. So right now I'm weighing in about 190, and I'm – I will be way faster than last season, so y'all have a good test for that. Way faster than last year. All right, that had to put a smile on Tech fans' faces. Thanks, Jamal. We appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you. All right, Jamal Haynes coming in now at about 190, he says, and, quote, way faster than last year. That's it comes from that could a great, be impressive. You know what? He comes from a great high school program in Grayson, in Loganville, Grayson High School. They've got an abundance of athletes coming out of that program. So the ability for him to go from a wide receiver to a running back is not surprising because of the versatility of the guys that come out of that program and all that they do, whether it's catching the football out of the backfield or going running routes from the position, receiver position, or shifting from a receiver to the backfield to get the football in open space. So Swarm will take over up 21 to 10. We got a chance to see Graham Knowles a little bit, the true freshman from South Lake Carroll High School in Texas on that last position. Zach Pyron will come out now and lead the Swarm squad. He was with Reckham for much of that first half. Pyron on the run, incomplete. Trying to hit Chase Lane. And you see Pyron with his hands up at Lane. He, and I think he's trying to tell Lane to come back to the football. When you're covered up like that, Pyron's coming towards you. That means the defense is coming that way as well with pursuit. So what you're asking your receiver to do is to help you out. Come back to the football to get possession of that football. Don't wait for it to get there. Go. 
Cooley out of the backfield, wide open. And that'll be enough to move the sticks. Jack Collins was able to run him out of bounds, 12 yards. And those are the plays that make defensive coaches lose their head. You cannot lose a player like Cooley in the flat like that. There was no one there until he was 15 yards down the field. You've got to have some defensive player looking and covering that up. Pyron has a receiver open downfield. Makes the connection inside the 30. It's Elko again. And that Pyron Elko. I know, Elko could up. be leading the team in receiving yards today. That's another 36. And what I like about what Pyron did, he didn't put too much on the football often. You'll see a quarterback get excited when their guy's that open and they overthrow him. He allowed Elko to run under the football. That's what you want to do as a quarterback, put a little air under the football. Pyron to throw again, has time over the middle, has a receiver open, hits him inside the 10. And this is Elko's, and it is his day. And Elko is making a great case to be that third receiver we were talking about. I mean, he's catching balls over his head. He's catching, you know, Hail Marys before the half. And now he's going across the middle, catching it fearlessly, knowing he's going to get hit. Now in the red zone, Pyron over the top, behind his receiver. Defended nicely that time by Cedric Franklin in the second as he was trying to find Leo Blackburn. Now Tech fans will be happy even though he didn't make the catch just to see number one in white on the field because Blackburn has been just beset by injuries in his time at Georgia Tech. But getting close to 100 percent and he is a big target 6'5", 220. And if he can stay healthy, I, mean, I think Tech fans think that's their number three receiver. See him at the top of your screen. And that should have been a back shoulder throw right there. And those are some of the things that the coaching staff will work with the quarterback Pyron and some of the other younger quarterbacks. When you see the defensive, uh, the defensive back playing with inside leverage, throw it to the back shoulder. Allow that big receiver to use his body to box out that defensive back. Third down and goal. Pyron again to throw. Has him in the corner this time. He and Blackburn connect. And it almost looked like they were playing the zone coverage on the back end of the defense. Because you'll see the defender right there. He'll let Blackburn run by him. So you have to wonder, was that a zone defense? You saw the defender patting his chest saying it's my fault. Ashton Paradis, freshman from Centerville, Georgia, in for the PAT. No good. Pulls that attempt, so it's 27 to 10, swarm on top. Leo Blackburn is back, number one in white, on the receiving end of the Zach Pyron pitch. Twenty-seven ten, our score. Swarm over Reckham here in the annual white and gold spring game. Makaya Scott, defensive tackle, joins us right now with the headset on. And Makaya, first of all, what's been the biggest difference for you guys playing, you know, with Tyler Santucci, uh, defensive coordinator Santucci, and Jess Simpson, now your defensive line coach this year, as opposed to last year? Oh uh, yeah, so the only difference is uh, scheme and just like building their terminology, building a bond with them coaches, a relationship with the guys, and just trying to just move forward every day, just trying to get better. Well, Makai, one of the things the coaching staff talked about was getting Lockett and Biggers on the field together to allow you to kind of move around. Talk about that adjustment and how that's going to affect you being a more effective player uh, this upcoming season. Oh uh, yes, yeah, sir. Us three on the field together will be a great, great job because I feel like it'll bring us like more, more experience on the field and just setting up guys to make plays. That's what we all trying to do to make make plays and just get one percent better every day. And I feel like that's something we can do. 
Macias, you guys struggled against the run last year. Is there some? Is there like a mantra or something that you guys you know, talk about or coming into this year in terms of we're not going to let that happen again in 2024? Yes, sir. Uh, our emphasis has been uh, demanding a new line of scrimmage each and every day at practice through spring. And it's every time we step on the field on these pads, we're just trying to get 1% better and just create a new line of scrimmage for our linebackers to come off and make plays as well. Any of these young cats on defense impressed you this spring? Oh, uh, yes, sir. Uh, no doubt. Um, Spice, Spice Adams, he's been coming up for the D-line as well. He's been working his, he been working his butt off. Uh, also, guys like Sed, young guys like uh, freshman linebacker uh, 15 coming in. He's been making some plays as well. And yes, sir. I didn't realize Kate Adams went by Spice. Yes, sir. My, uh, <laughs> yes, sir. That's his nickname in our room, Spice Adams. Anybody else got any good nicknames we need to know about? Uh... No, that's about it. That's about it for the D-line. <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to remember that one. Yes, sir. Makaius, appreciate your time, man. Yes, sir. Appreciate you guys. All right. See, you learn something new every day. Not only did we learn about the new mantra with that defensive line, but Spice Adams, <laughs> one of the team captains for this game today. Nice. Lou Makaius is an impressive young man. Well, he's got elite size at 6'4", yeah. 290, and... The ability to play inside and outside, which makes him such a valuable player to this defense because he's interchangeable and you could go to different formations and not have to change personnel when he's on the football field. So that's what makes him such a dynamic player for this defense and with the ability to move him around. He's one of those guys that can stand up and drop back into coverage in a zone scheme. So I think that is what's going to be different about this defense as opposed to last year. Zion Taylor getting some good run today. Made that, that last catch. It's Brody Rhodes. He's now showing his athleticism at that quarterback spot. Still on his feet before he gets touched down. Brody Rhodes, redshirt junior from Canton, Georgia. Went to Creekview High School. Guiding the Yellow Jackets on this play. LaMiles Brooks shaking up on the play. That is not good. One and gold hobbles off the field, and he'll take a seat on the bench and be looked at by that staff after a 25-yard run from Brody Rhodes. So we'll keep an eye on number one in gold, Miles Brooks. Projected as a starting safety when the season begins on August 24th against FSU. And one of the things I think Coach Key and his staff are doing a good job of is keeping local talent home and getting local talent to transfer back home into the program out of the portal. Yeah, there's a good look at Brooks right now on the sideline. Looks like they might be looking at that right leg. That's like that's definitely the one thing that's the one thing you don't want to get out of today. Anything else is fine. You don't want to get a player hurt on your final spring practice. And he's also one of the vocal leaders of this defense as well. So you definitely want to have him around. Hey, yo, Tefase on that stop transfer in from Florida State. There you see Brooks. He and Clayton Powell Lee going to form that safety tandem this fall. And they both have really good size on the back end at six foot two, uh, both about 190. So they've got length as well from that safety position. Rhodes to the corner of the end zone. Incomplete. Covered really well that time. Rodney Shelley. Coaching staff talked about him and how he's one of the more improved players on this defense from the beginning of spring practice until now, battling the receiver. Well, a good job uh, hand fighting on the outside. And the coaching staff talked about Rodney. They said he came in and he was playing Rodney football. Yeah. <laughs> but he started playing Georgia Tech football and started making plays. And when you've got ability, sometimes you think you can do a little bit extra, do what you want to do on the outside because he was a special player, but he's also not that big. So he's all probably had that little man complex to say, hey, I've got to show out and make that play every time I'm on the field. Rhodes to the end zone. That one's intercepted. Warren Burrell came down with it. And he continues his impressive spring with the INT. And he's letting everyone know about it too. And like Shelly on the play before, 
He fights through. He locates the football. He does a good job of high pointing and squeezing the football and bringing it to his body to not allow Janae to rip it and strip it from him. So that's what you want to see from your defenders. I like what I'm seeing from the fight on the back end from these defenders. Shelly, a good job on the back end fighting on the play before. And then on that play, a good job to get the interception by Burrell, locating the football, not panicking, but locating the football and squeezing the football. Senior offensive lineman Jordan Williams is going to join us right now. And Jordan offense looking like it's clicking just like it did at the end of last year. You guys hadn't skipped a beat. Oh, yeah, yeah, we haven't really for sure, and that's really a good sign going into next year. Even though we lost, like, we lost a couple guys, we didn't really lose a lot. And so going out there still looking the same, that's always, and not, not just looking the same, we, gonna, we definitely going to try to be better. We're going to be a lot better than last year, and that's always a good thing going into the next year. Well, talk about that, Jordan. Talk about the expectation this season. There wasn't a lot expected last year. There was the unknown. Now everybody knows what you're capable of doing. Talk about that coming into this season. The expectation was always the unknown for everybody else, but inside the locker room, it don't matter. It, don't, it didn't matter what we were doing. We knew what the expectation was, and we, we were short of it last year. We wanted it to at least be at least the ACC championship. So that's the expectations this year. And just to overall be a lot better than last year, up front, on the offense, on the defense, on everything, just making sure we clicking on all cylinders all the time. Jordan, how difficult is it to move around on the offensive line? I mean, we see it a lot where the player might move from the outside to the inside, like McKenney's moving from tackle to guard this year. You might have to move some pieces around to make sure you get the top five guys on the field at any one time. How tough is that for an offensive lineman? Oh, no, it's tough for sure because you always got to it, – it's tough playing. My first time going from tackle to guard, I feel like that made me a better tackle overall because that at guard, the action, like, right up in your face immediately. So you got to have, like, different footwork, different hand speed, different technique. It's just everything switching up. But when you get used to playing all those different positions, you just, you just going to see yourself getting better as a player overall. And talk about that versatility with your younger players coming in. Is there a young guy that has impressed you, one of the young offensive linemen that are here early? On the O-line, uh, you got Jamison Riggs. He out, he out there right now, big 70. Uh, my boy Tana, Tana a dog. Tana going to be a dog at center. He a dog. Tana a dog. And then I love it. Uh, my boy Harrison Moore, he like – what do you call it? He like the dark horse right now. He can play all five. And, that, and that's really impressive me. Oh, yeah, yeah, come my way. Oh, yeah, I see. If they, they came over to the sideline, I had to lower my shoulder on them. But it's all good, though. And then Jordan Floyd got great size, great speed. He can move for a big guy. So we definitely got some good freshmen in on the O-line right now. Well, Jordan, we appreciate your time. Thanks, my man. I'll let you get back with the teammates. Thank you. All right, Jordan Williams, senior tackle out of Gainesville. And I love that offensive lineman right. mentality, man. Tana's I love a it. Dog. They love <laughs> yes. Tana. Tana Alo Tupuola, who is really their center of the future. I mean, they've got Weston Franklin, who Coach Key said Franklin and Jordan Brown were the two most improved offensive linemen here in spring. So you got Weston Franklin, who's who's could be, could be a potential All ACC type center. But then you got Tana who's a true freshman, who's your center of the future. So to have Tana Harrison Moore, he talked about Jamison Riggs, could start the year at left tackle. The future's bright for these young offensive linemen. And I think it's kind of rare, as you see Blackburn on the receiving end here, rare to see so many true freshman offensive linemen getting a lot of playing that time. That is the end of the third quarter. Timeout. We've reached the end of the third quarter. One more is still to come here from Atlanta. White and gold game continues. Start of the fourth quarter here in Atlanta, 27-10. Team Swarm on top of Team Reckham. As we continue to talk to some players, let's talk to Kyle Eford, starting linebacker with the headset on. And, Kyle, for you now, I mean, you're not exactly like uh, one of the old heads on the team, but you've got a big leadership role coming into this year, don't you? How has that changed kind of your outlook coming into the season? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's always a good thing to be a leader of, you know, forefront of the team, but, you know, being a young guy don't mean none. It's just how you, how, how you got to carry yourself, how you do carry yourself. You just got to lead by example and whatnot. Well, Kyle, you guys lost six players at that linebacker position, whether it be transfers or to graduation. Talk about the development of the younger players that are coming in, stepping in, trying to earn those roles. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's, there's a constant development for our young guys. You know, 
you know, especially putting this new defense, you know, it's, it's knowledge of the game, trying to get it put into our heads, you know. Uh, I mean, definitely, you know, bringing in some new guys. We've got a couple of transfers, so the boys got some experience. Um, for you personally, what are you doing in the off season to get ready for next year? Whether it's changing your body, changing your mindset, what do you do personally? Uh, for, I mean, for me right now, it's straight mind, you know, because I mean, at this level, the margin of or margin of, uh, talent is so small. So I mean, everything is mental. So at this point, you know, it's just going to be knowledge for the game. You know, just trying to get everything put in my head. What has been the biggest adjustment with Coach Santucci coming in and changing this defense for you and the defenders on that side of the football? I mean, it hasn't been too much of an adjustment. You know, we just got to adapt. You know, it's, it's definitely a much more defined defense. So, I mean, don't stop the run. So, that's, that's what we're going to do. All right, Kyle, we appreciate your time. Best of luck this season, man. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right, Kyle Eford, linebacker. As this team is trying to put it in the end zone right now, Chase Lane on the receiving and saw a really nice play from Tay Seymour. I think we need to mention that coming from his safety spot to make a tackle on the play before. And those are some of the plays that Coach Key talked about at the half that he's seeing from his defense. You're seeing flashes here and there. It's not all going to come together and gel like you think it should or would early in the game. But as they continue to work together and develop that continuity, you'll see it all come all together. Right. So you've got to see those plays, those highlight plays right there. So fourth down for Graham Knowles. He's going to go to the end zone trying to get it to lane again. Nice catch. Did he get a foot in? No. No. Cedric Franklin on coverage, but that was a perfect pass, and Lane was able to bring it in. Just could not get that one foot into the end zone. He's looking back at the board. No, that right foot just couldn't quite get it down and hit the chalk. Hell of an effort, though, and that's a perfect pass from Knowles. Absolutely, and a good job by the defender not to panic, but to just play through a good job by Cedric Franklin. A freshman, and that's what you want to see, those types of plays. You know, he did not panic because a lot of times you'll see a young player panic and grab the receiver, which we see was going to be a ball that he would not have been able to bring in for the touchdown, but that would have been an instant first down if he panicked. So a good job on the back end of the defense by Cedric Franklin. Another true freshman getting playing time today from Mableton. Went to Kell High School. There's the quarterback room. Seen a little bit of everything. Haynes King got it started, had two scoring drives in that first half. Pyron showed. Aaron Philo led a scoring drive, long scoring drive as well. And there we saw Graham Knowles taking the team down the field. Even Brody Rhodes, we've seen a little bit from today. And you see Graham Knowles at six foot seven, 220 pounds, number 14. He is going to be a big time addition to that quarterback room. And Philo back in, swing pass. That's Evan Dickens on the receiving end. Maybe picks up a yard. And to me, Chris, this is the more important part of the scrimmage because these are the guys that are, you're going to depend on to be backups and guys that you depend on to come into the football game. Bailey Stockton again. Look at that speed, too, as he outruns the defender. Gets a block downfield. Stockton is going to score. Well, Bailey Stockton and Chris Elko are battling it out for the receiver of the game award. And a great job by number four, Abdul Janay, to get down there and give him the block that he needed to get back to the inside. What I like about what Stockton did on this crossing route is he got to the edge, he got to the outside, he was able to stay in bounds with the defender, and then he allowed his receiver to get a block to get him that lane that he needed to cut back across the field. Apparently he stepped out of bounds when he made that cut back across the field. And I'm just giving him credit for staying in right. bounds and then he steps Still out. 53 <laughs> yards on the pitch and catch. Again, Philo quickly. Jenna avoids the first tackle but can't avoid the second and third. But once again, although he stepped out of bounds, you like the fact that the receiver came across his teammate to help him and get that extra block on the outside. A lot of times receivers don't want to block on the edge, but to be a successful offense, you've got to be all in and you've got to do your 111th. And that was a good job, again, by Jenna to get that block and allow him to get to the inside, although he was out of bounds.
injury timeout on the field. So that clock continues to run. Remember, we got a running clock here in the second half, taking you right up to the top of the hour. Philo continues to guide the offense. Got one on one coverage to the end zone. Touchdown catch made by Zion Taylor. 22 yards. And the redshirt freshman from Norcross, Georgia, hauls it in. Well, he's one of those skill position players on offense we thought we might see a little bit of today, and we're seeing a lot more of them today. And there's nothing else uh, the defensive back could have done on that play. Clayton Lee Powell, he's right in position, but a better job by Taylor to fight for that football. He may have gotten away with a little push off, but if it's not called, it's not a penalty. So good job by Taylor finding and locating the football and winning that battle. Stewart converts to PAT. And Reckham gets right back into it. 27-17 our score. Zion Taylor with the one-handed grab. Physical in the end zone. Eleven twelve left to go in this annual spring game here at Georgia Tech. Swarm leading Reckham by a 27-17 score. Eric Singleton joins us right now How you on doing? the field. How you doing, my man? I'm good. How do you feel about today? Uh, it was a real good day. Um, just working on executing some plays out here, um, getting the young guys some work, just see what they can do. Last year, you were a totally unknown commodity. You came in, you had an explosive season, freshman All-American. Mm -hmm. Now you kind of got that target on your back. Like yeah. You're not, you're not going to surprise anybody out there. You're going to get their best cover corner. So how do you adjust coming into this year knowing that now you've got to step it up to the next level? Uh, really just work during the offseason, execute, get better at my technique, uh, fundamentals, catching the ball, getting open. That's all. Talk about the offense and what your total expectations are this season. You guys come in as one of the top returning offenses. You've got an abundance of talent coming back. Talk about what your expectations are for you in this offense. Um, a lot of big plays, explosive plays. Coach um, Faulkner, he always preaches that. Explosive plays, that's Wayne's games. What type of work are you doing with Haynes specifically? How much can you guys work in the offseason, and what are you doing to get better just between the two of you guys? Oh, we throw the ball all the time, go to the field. Get some catches in, all the receivers, all the quarterbacks. We're always working. Are there any young players uh, that have, you know, impressed you, not just from the receiver position, but from other positions on the offense? Uh, on the offense, uh, we got we got some um, young old linemen who they threw them right in the fire, and they, they handled it well. So I feel like uh, offense, we got uh, Scooter, number, running back, um, number six, real, real good. Trey Horn, Isaiah, he's hurt right now, but he should be an impactful player when he comes back. Eric, when you're really going at it in practice, who's the one DB that gives you the hardest time? Uh, me personally, I had to say I give it to Amari because that's his play style and we always go at it. I appreciate your time, Eric. Enjoy the rest of the day. You too. All right, Eric Singleton, freshman All-America last year, part of this deep receiving core that Georgia Tech has coming into this year and a lot of weapons for Haynes King and company on the receiving end. and. Chris Elko has been a serious weapon today. Look at their freshman season of Eric Singleton compared to Calvin Johnson. I mean, that is some high praise indeed from a number standpoint. Absolutely. That's a mirror. When you get compared to Megatron, I mean, you're doing something special out there on the football field. And we found out a new nickname as well, Scooter. Yes. For Anthony Carey. Yep. So we found a couple of them today already. Got Spice Adams. Scooter Carry. Scooter Carry. Georgia Tech's going to set up to punt this one away. David Shannon. Shanahan, rather, the Irishman. You know, it's going to be a special trip for him when the Jackets go to Ireland to play Florida State to open the season. Bailey Stockton back to return this pump, but he watches it bounce out of bounds. <laughs> 39 yards on the punt from Shanahan. So 
final eight minutes and 11 seconds of this white and gold game. I've been impressed with the poise of all these quarterbacks. You know, you expect it from Haynes King and from Zach Pyron because they've got all the experience, but Aaron Philo, Graham Knowles, and even Brody Rhodes. Philo has looked really good out there. It'll be interesting to see if he can push Pyron for that second quarterback role. See who's coming out here at quarterback. At the jersey tucked up underneath the shoulder pads not doing me any favors nice run that time though by Chad Alexander looks like Ben Guthrie at quarterback Georgia Tech's shown a lot of versatility from the running back position as well all of those guys have been able to you know seem to be fall forward backs running behind their pads Doing a good job of reading the blocks, finding the seam, and getting and hitting the seam when they need to. There's a nice pass over the middle. Defended well, though. Knocked away. That might have been Tay Seymour again defending on that play. It was. So Tay Seymour making a couple of big plays defensively for the Jackets. And Seymour's a bigger. And he's a bigger safety, too, at 203 pounds, 5'11". He's compact, but he does a good job of getting his arm in there, especially on those crossing routes, one of the more difficult routes to cover. Third down and one. Alexander will pick it up, move the sticks. Alexander carries the football. Again, Tafasi on the tackle. Tafasi is one of those transfers, came in from Florida State out of the portal, doing a good job. He's getting a lot of playing time today. That's a nice strike completion to Jinnah. Ben Guthrie on the money. Amari Harvey on the tackle. And Tafase is another guy that you can stick down in the interior of that defensive line to give Micaiah Scott more opportunities to move around as well. So I think that's why we're seeing a lot of Tafase today, along with Biggers and Lockett. And Adams, if he can be one of those guys in the middle of that defense to kind of be stout at the point of attack, it allows them to move Scott around more. Carey with a nice job after the catch to elude the defender. But the defense was too quick to him. Tajay Butler. A true freshman bringing down Carey. Carey showing his ball skills, though, receiving out of the backfield. Carry and try to bounce it up inside right into the teeth of that defense. Maybe picked up a couple. There you see Al out to a polo, number 50, the center. Got the hair coming out the back of the helmet. And you know what makes him such a, a, a difficult task for defenders? He's only six foot one, 330. So he's got a low, natural, low center of gravity. And everyone knows down in those trenches, you win. The low man right. wins the battle. So it's very difficult when you've got a guy that's squatty and they're already, you know, have a low, natural low center of gravity. Got three flushed out of the pocket. Throws that one incomplete. And as a tackle, you want the length. You yes. want that 6'4", at least 6'4", 6 6'5". 6 because you want those long arms and you're center. more of a dancing bear. So you in, in, in the interior, you want... Thicker, shorter guys. You don't want guys, if you're, when you see an elite guard that's 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six, that lets you know athletically they're on a whole different level because they have to be able to sit in their hips during the block. As a tackle, you're upright more because you're out there as a dancing bear, and what your key is to keep that outside shoulder away from those defenders. Yeah. You don't want to give up that short edge to give them that short corner. You want to keep the width of the pocket. Those interior guys, those two guards in that center, they've got to sit down and be stout at the point of attack and not allow pressure in the quarterback's yeah, face. Yeah, Tana at 6'1", 330, big in the dumper. Guthrie. Has a receiver open. And it bounds inside the 15. Zion Taylor again. Taylor, Stockton, Elko. That trio 
Probably not the trio that would roll off of your tongue coming into this spring game for Georgia Tech in terms of the receivers. And Jana, too, have played really well today. They've gotten the majority of the snaps, but Forrest, they've certainly showed that when given the opportunity, they can make plays. And Ben Guthrie with a throw right on point where the ball needed to be. Impressive so far by all of these quarterbacks getting the ball down the field. Guthrie's the fifth quarterback we've seen today, and all five of them have played very well. Alexander, now Guthrie's going to keep it. They'll blow the play dead inside the five. Coming into this game, we knew and understood what this offense had the potential to be with what we saw last season. But what's been impressive is the bevy of receivers that we've seen in this game make big plays and that's outside of the guys that you know when you're talking about Leary you're talking about Rutherford you're talking about Singleton other guys are making plays and that makes this offense very versatile for defenses as they prepare to try and stop them on the outside final two minutes on the clock as you see coach key Once this game hits those triple zeros, his staff will now evaluate the way the spring went. And you got to get back into looking at that transfer portal, too. It opens right back up, and you got to be active nowadays. And there are players getting in the portal daily. So if there's an area where you see concern and there's a need, you get in that portal and you find that talent, you match the talent to what you do and what you're looking for and what their capability is. Just because a guy was a great linebacker at one program doesn't mean he fits your scheme. And I think that's one of the things that coaches have learned to do and that do coaches that do well in the portal understand. You've got to find guys that do what you do well, not just guys that are great players at a position. They have to do what you do well when you bring them into your program. Guthrie showed good elusiveness on that last play. Wasn't able to hit his receiver on the run. Let's see what Ben Guthrie can do here, fourth and five. He can pick up a first down just before the goal line as we're inside a minute. Guthrie to throw. To the corner of the end zone, touchdown. That's Chris Elko. I kind of laughed to myself because they don't keep spring game record books. But if they did, Chris Elko's name might be written all over the Georgia Tech spring game record book. And Elko did a good job of beating the, the cornerback as well as the linebacker. You had Lawson Pritchett and Tay Seymour covering him on that play. And he's able to get beyond both of those guys. These quarterbacks have done a good job of putting the ball right where it needs to be. Burr on the try. Burr who kicked a 61-yard field goal in the first half. Hits the PAT. Yeah, Elko has five catches for 143 yards and two touchdowns. It's going to be interesting to see who yeah. gets that third receiver role because a lot of guys have put their name in a hat and showed up today uh, to make this a very challenging decision for the coaching staff. Dinner in on him at the varsity. Someone else is buying that chili cheese <laughs> slaw dog for Chris Elko and that F.O. And we've gone final 27-24. Team Swarm with the win. What are your final thoughts after what you've seen today? This offense is as advertised, and I think they will be a problem for defenses. I think defensively, we saw some flashes of what Coach Santucci and his staff want to see. They just have to continue to develop, especially at that second level at the linebacker position. Haynes King, Jamal Haynes, Eric Singleton Jr., Malik Rutherford. The offense just keeps humming along. And we saw some big plays from some young talent on defense as well. That's going to wrap it up for us here in Atlanta for Forrest Conley and our entire crew. I'm Chris Cotter. Thanks for watching, everyone. Looking forward to seeing the Jackets in 2024.